Investors who are active on Reddit have definitely recognized their potential influence on the stock market during the whole GameStop uh, revolution and frenzy. Um, so is this a new reality that hedge funds will have to deal with? We're going to be talking about this with my guest today, Thomas Thornton. He is the founder of Hedge Fund Telemetry and definitely an expert uh, on this topic. Uh, Tom, nice to meet you. Welcome to the show here at Stansberry. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you, too. So is this the new normal for hedge funds, Tom? Uh, you know, this Reddit phenomena where individuals have come together and squeezed out institutions. Is this basically the end of leveraged short selling by hedge funds? I don't think it's the end of short selling. Uh, I do believe that any smart hedge fund will be looking at short interest uh, a lot closer and most hedge funds are very cognizant of how much short interest is on a stock. And also, like when I worked for my hedge fund, we looked at days to cover, very, very important. Uh, days to cover on the short side and days to liquidate on the long side. So I, I just think that it's going to change. Um, you know, hedge funds are the dartboard again. And it's kind of ironic because the hedge funds actually lost a lot of money and everybody's mad at them and they made money on the way up. So it's, um, it's a mess. The Robin Hood thing's a mess. And I don't think it's end of short selling. And I think short selling has a very good purpose in the market. Let me, let me ask you this then, uh, is it, is it going to cause, you know, hedge fund managers to, to go back to the table, relook at strategies and, you know, say, how do we, how do we go up against this again? Because it will happen again. It, it will. And I, I don't know of any other stock in the market right now that has such high short interest uh, like GME did. I mean, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. The Reddit people, uh, Wall Street bets, kudos to them. They nailed it. Unfortunately, these things, what goes up always comes down like this. And I, I really feel awful uh, knowing that what would, what would ultimately happen is that you'd get a lot of people with all the media coverage buying GameStop over 200, over 300, over 400, and then poof, it gets, it gets wiped out. Uh, you know, what do you make of the way a lot of the way people have painted this like, oh, it's the people, uh, you know, it's power to the people and it's the big, ugly hedge fund monsters of Wall Street. Is that a fair uh, depiction that we're hearing? Well, a little, maybe. I, I, I'd say it's, it's great to see retail people come in. Unfortunately, it's at a very late stage in the market and they're not coming in necessarily to invest. These are people that were taking very, very aggressive bets or basically gambling. And the thing that really is the culprit here and everybody like is, you know, pointing, you know, slinging arrows at Robin Hood right now right. is they were giving out margin like candy uh, for unsuspecting new investors. And for the average investor, if you give, you know, we have a $20,000 account, and you give them 40,000 buying power, and then it gets this, you know, very, very aggressive stock gets taken down early gaps down overnight. Uh, they're going to have a problem with their liquidity. And that's what happened. I also like, uh, you know, how Mark Cuban uh, took to the platform. And, and he said, it's not going to be a set of circumstances where all these people lost money, they're going to go home with their tail between their legs. And they're never going to do this again. So he, you know, he he's also basically saying that you know we we have to be ready for for this new reality. Yeah, Mark. Um, I mean, he's a great investor. He's a very long term, patient investor, and that's not what any of these uh, these these people that were investing. I've read these awful stories of people that have that just put their life savings into this GameStop, trying to get rich. Uh, we've seen it with others as well. Bitcoin did that uh, a couple of years ago. Maybe it's doing it again. I don't know. I, I just think that the when it gets this speculative, you really just have to be very careful. And again, I, I hope people took some money off. They, they made some money and, and profited from this. 
and they'll think about it and say, wow, it, it, it's now under 100 and it probably will go a lot lower. And they, they're di diversifying and learning from this. And that's a, that's a tough, uh, it's a tough thing to think about the people that have really been hurt. And on that note, I actually would love for you to share, um, you know, from your personal experience, uh, and this was from one of your tweets where you say, one of the most important things that ever happened to me in the markets was getting my legs cut off at the knees after I took a big, greedy, long position that the CEO uh, told me uh, looked good. I lost half my net worth. Uh, my legs grew back smarter. Yeah, it's, um, this was, um, I was working for Bear Stearns in 1996 i had just gotten married my wife had two daughters so i'm a stepdad of two daughters i just bought a house in i was living in los angeles we had just bought a house and it was a big house and we had taken it down to studs obviously i, I just want to mention um my wife's an interior decorator and so the background um she designed my office and uh, it's an old farmhouse here in Greenwich. But what happened is I was speaking with the CEO of a company called ReadWrite. ReadWrite made the little tiny arms that are on hard drives. And this is um, was a business that was really growing uh, exponentially. And I took a very, very large uh, position in this. And I spoke to the CEO and you could do that at those times. And, and he assured me, he said, Things look great here. I don't think you need anything to worry about. And then when earnings hit, it just was an absolute disaster. I lost a lot of money. And the thing that I had, I had, I, I leaned on a lot of people that had gone through this, um, older people that had experience. And this was obviously an experience for me. They said, look, just get back to your process, take smaller positions, get yourself back into the profit zone. It's not going to come back all in one day. And it took a couple of years. Thank goodness for the tech bubble. I was really fortunate yeah. um, after those few years to have made it back. You also speak a lot about gold and silver. Uh, we saw the wild ride that silver, you know, was going through a lot of investors, silver investors, patient silver investors, waiting for that breakout moment, thinking, is this going to be the game changer uh, to only come back down uh, uh, shortly after that? Um, what, what did you make of the phenomena here in silver? Well, silver is, let's say this, the, it wasn't like GME where you had this huge short position right. in silver. Uh, that's a big difference. What they were trying to do is there's a silver coin market, uh, and, and then there's the paper market. They were trying to buy up the coin market so the paper market would squeeze higher. Now, I, I'll tell you this, I, my background, my grandfather used to own silver mines back in the 60s and did really, really well uh, in the metals markets. He was a trader and, and uh, I learned a lot from him, but I was long silver. I was actually on another uh, network, uh, financial network the other day. And I was talking about silver saying, I think this could go. And I bought calls in SLV the next like few hours later, I was long SLV as well. They raised margin requirements, which is basically what Robinhood did uh, for all those crazy stocks. That, and, and a brokerage firm has that um, right, as does the uh, futures trading market. They, they could do whatever you want on, on these things. And that curbed speculation. So it got squashed. My call option, uh, call spread idea went, you know, to zero basically. And I sold my SLB. Uh, I like it. It's a cheap, it's one of the cheaper metals. Silver goes into a lot of different things in tech and automotive. So I, I, I just want to see this, you know, play out a little and maybe I'll re-enter. Uh, just a final note, maybe we can wrap with this story. Uh, you mentioned your, your grandfather was uh, a miner. Um, he also uh, sold gold when it hit $1,000. Now you say it worked out because he ended up buying long-term uh, California municipal bonds. Um, but you, you remember that phone call when he did it 
Uh, yeah. tell, us a little, tell us a little bit about it because you were 15. Yeah, I, did, I didn't put this in the tweet, but yeah. what was really crazy is that my grandfather called my dad and said, I just sold all my gold. And, and this is also when you, it was on the nightly news that gold hit a thousand. And this was the first time it's ever happened uh, that I believe. And usually when something gets on the news like GME did, uh, it's probably the top, but he was crying. He, he thought I made the biggest mistake of my life. And as it turned out, it, it, it fell back down uh, after a few days and he wasn't, uh, you know, you know, blown up and in, inside, but he, he went and bought 15% uh, uh, long-term uh, California municipal bonds. And that's uh, think about a tax-free 15% yield uh, for 20 or 30 years, uh, non-callable. Uh, it worked out just fine. Uh, Tom, I guess just just one final thought to wrap here to, to investors watching and all this madness uh, would be would be some words of wisdom from you uh, right now. I think right now I'm I'm looking at the overall markets in two different ways. Uh, market sentiment is really high. Uh, this has been a very strong rally off the lows in March. Um, retail's in there, they're buying like crazy. That usually happens towards the later end of a market uh, move. And I use the mark indicators, which are exhaustion signals, which we've seen a lot of those in the last um, couple of weeks and not only on daily, but weekly. So I still like the market and I think there's pockets to buy. I bought some energy stocks today, but I think there's a risk um, of lower in the next few weeks, next few months, um, but you have the opening, reopening. And so that you could see a lot of the value stuff come back on there as well. So it's a so, tough uh, conundrum I have. Right. So how are you, how are you hedging against that? Uh, well, I, I, I'm truth be told, I do short stocks, um, but I don't short stocks that have super high short interest and overall in the market right now, this is actually one of the lowest uh, amounts of short interest in the market in years, almost like 20 years going back to 2000. And when you don't have shorts in the market, let's say there's a negative catalyst, the downside could be rather substantial because it acts like a vacuum without the shorts that what they do is they buy, take profits and hold things up. So right now I do have a lot of shorts, uh, some in retail, um, I mean, Lululemon, I, I've been short for a while. I, I, you know, a few that, that I think are great companies, but they've just been overdone. Tom, I appreciate your thoughts today. Uh, you have an impeccable background. Kudos to your better half. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. And thank you for watching. We'll have much more for you. So be sure to stay tuned to Stansberry Research. In the meantime, follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniela Convoy.